Welcome to the Legacy Maker Sports Network. We are approaching the 2021-22 NFL season. So, we are going to give you, and this is my top 10 for the Legacy Maker Sports Network, my top 10 MVP candidates. Now, folks, we are used to, and as you saw in my promotion on Instagram and Facebook earlier, we are so used to everyone talking about quarterbacks only. And I understand that that is the standard for today. I understand that that's something where... Uh, you know, everybody's infatuated with the quarterback uh, because of fantasy and all that. But I feel that there are players that are just as important as the quarterback. I will have quarterbacks in my top 10. Um, but I will tell you that my number one will not be a quarterback. Um, I think that we harp on quarterbacks, like I said, way too much. And we need to give these other players some love because they are very important to their teams. So my top 10 is going to consist of some defenders, some wide receivers, and a running back or two, maybe. But I definitely will have a running back. Speaking of running back, let's go to my number 10 spot. My number 10 spot, I am going to put Dalvin Cook, running back of the Minnesota Vikings. This player is dynamic. If you look at his career, you look at everything this young man has done at only the age of 26 out of Florida State University. He has continued to be better and better by the year. And when you look at these stats and you understand everything that he's done up to this point, you have to ask yourself, what kind of 2021 season is this player going to have? Now, you talk about 74 carries for 354 yards in 2017. You talk about 133 carries for 615 yards in 2018. You talk about 2019, where he had 250 carries for 1,135 yards. And each one of those years, he had two touchdowns, two touchdowns, 13 touchdowns. And then last year, it was his breakout year where he had 44 receptions. He had 312 carries for 1,557 yards, uh, where he averaged five yards a carry and had 16 touchdowns. Now, when you look at those stats, when you understand those stats, and you understand the way the Minnesota Vikings play football, yes, Kirk Cousins gets his stats. Yes, Kirk Cousins makes the money. But with Kirk Cousins and his current uh cloud of the COVID situation not knowing whether he'll miss a game two games whatever you have to look at Dalvin Cook as a possible 2,000 yard runner he has the ability he has the speed he has the vision he has the intelligence to make the right cuts he has the ability to do certain things on the football field that a lot of guys just can't do Dalvin Cook is one of those players that I really look at as a possible 2,000 yard player who could be the catalyst to what the Minnesota Vikings are going to do on the football field. Number nine, Khalil Mack. This guy from 2014 to 2020 has had a very productive career. Since 2014, when he played for the then Oakland Raiders, now the Las Vegas Raiders, he had 15 sacks. That was his biggest production of his career. Now, through his years with Chicago, He's had 12 and a half, eight and a half, and last year, nine sacks and interception. Now, with COVID and everything, we understand players that really didn't have a great offseason. They couldn't get things done, et cetera, et cetera. I believe this will be the year for Khalil Mack. You're coming into a season when you have Andy Dalton, when you have Justin Fields. You're going to need your defense to step up. So that is why I feel like it is absolutely important that the defense for the Chicago Bears plays their best. And that starts with Khalil Mack. Even though he's 30 years old, uh, people say he might be getting a little long in the tooth because with that position, you are doing so much. You're taking so many hits. You're doing so much physically. But I believe that he is going into the prime of his career. Uh, this man is is the catalyst that will help the Chicago Bears if they want to do anything in catching the Green Bay Packers. All you need is just a little bit from your offense. You don't need that much. You just need a little bit from your offense, and this guy can take over, and I believe that he will get at least 14 to 15 sacks, and I believe that he'll get some interceptions as well and be a very important part for his team going into the 21-22 season. Now, let's go to number eight. Now, number eight, let's go to Los Angeles as we talk about Justin Herbert, the first quarterback on the board last year, 4,336 yards, 31 touchdowns, only 10 interceptions, a rating of 98.3. I am a little worried 
Because when you have a coach like Anthony Lynn, who is so good, who does so much for his players, I feel and I hope he does not take a step back. And that's why I'm putting him here. I would have him higher. However, I do think he'll take a little bit of a step back, meaning that I think he'll only throw for about maybe 4,000 yards, but I think that his touchdown output will be the same. But he is important. He is an important catalyst to what the Los Angeles Chargers are going to do in this upcoming season. If Justin Herbert gets hurt, if Justin Herbert does not have uh, at least 4,000 yard pa 4, yards passing, if he does not uh, step up to the plate, then they will be a team that will take a complete step back. Uh, even with those stats going down a little bit, I think that he will be the type of player that can still lead this Los Angeles Chargers team to the playoffs. But without him, they will be picking number one to number five in next year's NFL draft. Number seven, this player right here, one of my favorite receivers in the National Football League. I've even said he's better than guys like DK Metcalf, which is a little bit controversial for some people because I know DK has the chase downs. He has the speed, the muscles, the pictures, and all that. But folks, do not underestimate this young man. I'm talking about number seven, Terry McLaurin from the Washington football team. This young man coming in the league in 2019. In 2019, he had 58 catches for 919 yards, 7 touchdowns. Now, his touchdowns went down last year, which you can understand because of the quarterback situation. Has not been the greatest quarterback situation when it comes to the Washington football team. Uh, but you look at uh, last year. 87 catches, 1,118 yards with a 12.9 yard average. He is terrific. He is going to put just absolute fear in many defensive coordinators because now he has Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick is not a great quarterback. Let's just be honest about that. He's not all he is not an all-time great. But what one thing that Ryan Fitzpatrick can do, he can extend plays, he can get the ball downfield, he can hit these uh great intermediate passes, he can hit slants, he can pretty much do anything. He can hit the post uh patterns, he can hit the fly routes. Whatever you need Ryan Fitzpatrick to do, he will do. Now, he'll have games where he will throw a lot of interceptions and he'll make a lot of mistakes. But, folks, Terry McLaurin is going to benefit from this the most. And I feel like his production is one of the reasons why this will help the Washington football team. Now, number six, Lamar Jackson. A lot of people will say, why do you have Lamar in your top ten? You know, he kind of had a little bit of a down year last year, etc. Well, let me say this. Lamar Jackson over his NFL career, over his NFL career since 2018, has 7,085 yards passing, 68 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. That's pretty good numbers. The passing yards isn't that bad, but he's low on interception rate. However, let me say this. Even though last year he only had 2,757 yards passing, 26 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions, he is important. Without Lamar Jackson, look at the Baltimore Ravens organization before Lamar Jackson got there. Yes, they had the Super Bowl, but they had had season after season of disappointments. Joe Flacco was on his last leg out of there. This man not only runs, not only passes, but he brings an energy to this football team. They got to the second round of playoffs last year. Through COVID, through everything that was going on, that's all you can ask for. They ran to a buzzsaw going against the uh, Buffalo Bills. So I really think that... If you are Lamar Jackson at this point, and let's be clear, Lamar Jackson, they can talk about him, but the records show 30-7. and seven. That shows a guy who is very important to his football team. Stay humble. Don't worry about what the critics are saying. Don't worry about everybody calling you running back or here and there. All you need to worry about is continue to do what you are doing, and that is winning games. At number five, we have Aaron Rodgers. Why do I have Aaron Rodgers at number five? Uh, I don't think he'll win an MVP this year. I think that his numbers will take a little bit of a step back. Uh, I believe that him not playing in the preseason, especially this year, will have a little bit more of an impact because he missed so much the offseason program, the drama, etc. But it doesn't matter, folks. Aaron Rodgers is still going to have a terrific year. The Green Bay Packers are still probably going to win the NFC North. Uh, he is going to uh, just uh, decimate defenses as he always does. I believe he'll lean a little bit more and more on the running game which i think that aaron jones will uh pick up maybe 13 to 14 possibly even 1500 yards uh, i believe at this point uh, aaron Rodgers 
uh, and Matt LaFleur just want to win. They just want to get to the Super Bowl. So uh, they're not going to worry about too much of trying to get Aaron a bunch of records. Why worry about records when you guys continue to get to MC Championship games? You know, you got to get a formula going so you can try to get over the hump. And that's the biggest thing for the Green Bay Packers is getting over that hump so they can get to the Super Bowl. So, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers being number five is important because, as everyone knows, if he doesn't play, the Packers are picking top five easily. So even if his numbers are down, he is still a great, great MVP candidate that everybody can uh, definitely have respect for. Now, going number four, Dak Prescott, the Dallas Cowboys. I think that it's very apparent why Dak is at this spot. When you look at the Dallas Cowboys last year, without this quarterback, they turned to a team that just looked absolutely horrible. They weren't, they didn't have the greatest record when he left, uh, you know, because of injury, etc. But, you know, everything that he does on the football field, everything he brings, not only on the field, but leadership standpoint, you have to put him in this MVP race. I don't think he'll get it. I just think that he's important for the Dallas Cowboys because, as I said with Aaron Rodgers, if Dak is not playing for the Dallas Cowboys, they're easily picking the top. Uh, they're easily picking in the top ten. So he's a very important, integral part for this Cowboys team. Uh, and if they want to make any type of playoffs, he has to be there. And that's just the bottom line. Number three, we go to Russell Wilson, another guy. I don't have to do too much explaining on this. Russell Wilson is the Seattle Seahawks. He has been the Seattle Seahawks. We talk about the Legion of Boom. They were very important, but he is the reason why this team moves. He moves the needle. He is the franchise. So if you are the Seattle Seahawks, continue to surround this guy. Continue to sign the important players that you need to sign. He is one of the better players in this league, and I feel I still feel that he is underrated. He had a terrific season last year. He did so many great things for this franchise over the years. You know, Russell Wilson last year, 40 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Uh, he's just absolutely doing great things over his career. And by the way, he's only 33 touchdowns away from 300 will be 33 on november the 29th and this season at the age of 33 he'll already be at 300 touchdowns so sky is the limit for russell wilson who in the past has not had the greatest weapons but now he has weapons and if they continue to build around him russell wilson uh definitely will one day win the mvp but it won't be this year uh he's in the top 10 but it won't be this year because my next two candidates i feel are the best chances to win the mvp now, when we go to number two, we talk about Josh Allen. We talk about a guy who last year had 4,544 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Man, he is going to tear the NFL up, especially in that AFC East where you got a bunch of teams right now who don't know who they are, who are confused about who they are. He might just tear them up to the point where he might put a 50 spot on the touchdown meter. And I mean that because... He's just so good. When you got guys like Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, these guys are going to make plays. And when you have a guy as good as Josh Allen is, I'm telling you, especially with his running ability, he's going to tear things up. But he's not my number one. My number one is going to shock everybody. Number one. He's not a quarterback. He's not a receiver. He's not a running back. He's a defensive end. I'm talking about Chase Young from the Washington football team. I've been saying this now since the end of the season. Ladies and gentlemen, there are factors to why I am putting him at number one. And that first reason is his coach. When you look at Ron Rivera and what he's done with defensive players, when you look at what he did with Luke Keekley, when you look at Thomas Davis, you look at just overall what he has done with Josh Norman. He made him a $50 million player when he left and went to D.C., um, this coach prepares defensive players to be great. And I believe that's one of the factors. Number two, Chase Young looked damn good in his preseason debut. And I know people say it's preseason, yada, yada, yada. The way he exploded off the ball and took down Cam Newton, he looked like a high schooler taking down a rec player. That's how impressive he looked. Chase Young, coming out of Ohio State, was double teamed, double teamed. Uh, he had so many opportunities to get to the quarterback, but he affected so many plays. Now, when you have Montez Sweat, 
who is going to take double teams off of him. When you've got those two big eaters at defensive tackle, when you got a team whose defense is so daggone good, you can't just focus on Chase Young. In fact, I'm, I'll give you this. It's been 20 years since Michael Strahan broke the NFL's record with 22 and a half sacks in the 2001 season. I believe Chase Young breaks that mark. I believe Chase Young gets the 25 sacks. I believe that he has one of the most remarkable seasons we've ever seen from a defensive player. I believe that his impact is going to be absolutely devastating to offenses. Chase Young is going to have a hell of a year. The Washington football team is going to be a hell of a team. The Washington football team, no matter what you think about them in the past, this is a new team, Jack. And this team is going to be led by their defense. Their offense is going to do just enough, but their defense is tremendous. And if you don't think that Chase Young is going to have just a terrific season, then you got another thing coming. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been my top 10 MVP candidates. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like, subscribe. Legacy Maker, the All Sports Network.